This is an introduction to the BCA table, or before, change, and after table. Uh, we're going to be using this for a FET activity as well as for some calculations in chemistry as well, but we're going to start with the one that's in the FET activity. As far as that works, uh, there's four steps you have to have. Step one, you have to have a recipe. Step two, you have to figure out what materials you were starting with. Step three, calculate the amount of products and any leftovers. And then step four, figure out how much is actually going to change. Now the sequence of these four steps don't necessarily have to always go in this order, but this is the way that you're gonna probably start using this when you're working with the FET simulation. All right, so what type of simulation, what's the simulation gonna have? Well, we're gonna have a recipe, and that recipe is gonna start off with two slices of bread, and three uh, and, and a slice of cheese makes a cheese sandwich. And instead of having all these words involved, um, this is gonna be the symbolic version that we're looking at, or 2B, standing for bread, plus one C, cheese, becomes a CB2, and the CB2 ends up being the cheese sandwich. All right, so this is what the actual simulation itself is gonna look like. You'll notice that there ends up being all sorts of portions to this. There's the before reaction, there's the after reaction, there's some customizing that you can do here in the corner. And what I wanna point out, at least on this portion, is step one, where we have the recipe. The recipe's right here up at the top, where it requires two slices of bread plus one slice of cheese becomes your cheese sandwich. Step two is you gotta figure out what you are starting with. And that you can control using the simulator portion at the bottom. You'll notice you have the up and down arrows. If I click it up, obviously this number is gonna get higher. If I click this one up, it's gonna get more cheese. And you'll notice it's also gonna symbolize what's going to happen in the before reaction. So this is all the crap you have to begin with. It has nothing necessarily to do with the recipe at this point. This is just what you'd like. This is the recipe. This is what you have in the pantry. It's more or less what that represents. Calculate the, what the products and the leftovers. And you really don't have to calculate that with this simulation because it actually just shows it to you. Whatever is the total on this after box. So you'll notice we had the before box before and the after reaction. Here's what we have afterwards. We have one sandwich, two slices of bread, and zero slices of cheese left over. And then calculate the amount that's left over. Now, in order to be able to do this, what we're gonna do is actually use the BCA table portion. So you'll notice we got this BCA table, <clears throat> and you'll notice that I have it as before, change, and after. When you go to write these on quizzes or tests later, you, all you're gonna be really doing is writing down B, C, and A would be just fine. You'll notice that I have the recipe on this first line right here, and then I've got this section that's blank up on top, and we'll talk about that at a future time. All I'm really concerned about is filling in this main portion of the table. And if you have a copy of the worksheet in front of you, you should go ahead and start filling this out together as we're going through this in the presentation. So in step one, we have the recipe. Well, we've already got that. Here's the balanced equation. 2B plus 1C goes to 1CB2. Step two. Well, how did I know that there was two slices of bread before and one slice of cheese? Well, I got to control that. I changed these values right up in here, and all I did is I put those numbers in here. Well, before we start making sandwiches, how many sandwiches are we gonna actually have? Zero. That's why this number over here is zero. And most of the time, like 99% of the time, the products side of the reaction is always going to be a zero. Step two, we said, or excuse me, step three is we said we're going to take a look at the products. And with the products, you'll notice that I've got two, zero, and one. And literally, that's where I have these from. Well, let's take a look. The leftover bread, I have two. That's where the two came from. Leftover cheese is zero. And the number of products that I made ended up being one sandwich. So now at this point, we have to calculate the change of how we got there. Well, how do I go from four down to two? How do I go from one down to zero? How do I go from zero up to one? Well, you literally just subtract two from the four, subtract one from the one, and add one to the sandwiches or the zero. So you notice that the reactants are going away and the products are showing up. Now this is the same type of thing that I'm gonna have you do for the rest of the problems that are in that particular packet that I sent out. Um, if you do have questions, you're of course welcome to ask. I'll do what I can to help you out.